Hi, I'm Craig Brown, and this is Cobweb Maths. In this video, I'm going to talk about the roulette wheel in my head. First of all, I'm going to give you some background information about the conscious mind, which is linked to the subconscious mind. The conscious mind has very limited memory, only about, um, about four or five places. And the subconscious mind has almost unlimited memory. The conscious mind works relatively slowly. The subconscious mind works like lightning. Conscious mind has to sleep. The subconscious mind never never sleeps, uh, and the, the conscious mind also supplies input to the subconscious. The, because the subconscious never sleeps, it's always working on input. This asterisk here this is is about a book, a book called Blink. It's a book by Malcolm Gradwell, and it's about the sub subconscious mind and how experts use the subconscious mind. Now in this video I'm going to tell you three stories, three incidents, right? The first incident happens in my classroom. Now, in my classroom, I accept verbal challenges. It's a random thing. If they want, if they, the student wants to make a um, verbal challenge, he can. Uh, this challenge leads to what I call the Roman Colosseum Syndrome, where I'm a gladiator, the challenger is a gladiator, and the whole class um, sit and watch the contest. Uh, essentially, I use my opponent's attacking words against them. In story two, um, I have this technique where I would take um, problematic students out of the classroom, I don't speak to them in the corridor, and that way they didn't have an audience to play to, and I'd pick my words, and with the right words, I could sort them out, sort out the problem, and they'd go, they'd leave the classroom like a lion, they'd come back like a lamb. The students in the classroom always wondered what was going on. It was a case of finding the right words in between. And story three, I used the, uh, the um, roulette wheel and I got a mind-blowing answer, which was beyond my imagination behind anything I could imagine and I'll share that with you oh I forgot to do this one all right now the roulette wheel in my head is my subconscious I detach my subconscious mind I ask a question of my subconscious the roulette sp spin, wheel spins, and a split second later, I have an answer. I couldn't actually explain any more. I just do it. Okay. Time to tell the stories. I'm in my classroom. I'm at the board. And one of my students says, Mr. G, you're not cool. And I stop, I turn slowly, and I look at him. And while I'm doing that, I wrap my mind around the key words, not cool, and I spin the roulette wheel. And then I smile, because the words come to me. The front of the classroom is like a theatre. It's all an act. So then I reply, how can I be cool? And I pause, everybody's waiting. 
You can't be cool, I say. And I pause again. When you're hot stuff, I say. And that's it. It's all over. There's no way out for him. There's no comeback. And I win again. All right, we'll do the second story now. I've got this student in my classroom and we're at loggerheads. Um, I've tried everything. And it's time to sort him out. To sort the whole, whole situation. No, well, not so much sort him out, but sort out the situation. You know. So I said, right, outside, I want to talk to you now. So we go outside. Um, I don't know what I'm going to say, but as I go out the door, I spin the roulette wheel. And um, by the time I've closed the door, I've got the words. And this is what I say to him. In a primitive society, one day, a boy is a boy. He goes through a ceremony, and the next day, he's a man. Right? It just takes, before the ceremony, he's a boy. After the ceremony, he's a man. In our society, it doesn't work that way. You have to go through a period of adolescence, and it's pretty long. And you have to rebel against authority figures to establish your independence. You see me as an authority figure. That's why we're having problems. Do you understand what I'm telling you? The boy looks at me. Well, he's a young man, actually. And he, and he, and he says, yes. I said, good. And we walk back into the classroom. And was problem solved. It's all done. That's all I had to say to him. And, and that was the, the number of the problem. He saw me as a th an authority figure. And once he understood that, and then understood what I told him, problem solved. Right, there was um, another incident. Now, um, the boy was a Pacific Islander. He came into my classroom and he was quite agitated. And uh, my radar went off and uh, summing up. So I said, outside, I want to talk to you. So I talked to him. I said, you know, what? why are you late? And he told me. And I listened to him. He was telling me the truth, but he wasn't telling me everything. So I spun the roulette wheel on my head. And I said, what's he not telling me? And the answer came back. And the answer was, he's organizing the fights. I said, what? Organizing the fights? Well, you know, there was fights breaking out all around school. And, uh, okay. I thought to myself, I looked at him. I said, you, you've been organising the fights, haven't you? Well, he just gasped, looked at me. You know, I had him. And I said, that's not a good thing to do. Sent him back into class. Well, the, the, the school I was at didn't have a good record of dealing with things like that. So I thought, I'm wasting my time passing this on. However, I did the right thing. I recorded it on the computer. Well, I was mistaken. Because next week he was gone. One of the, um, the management team came across that information. They interviewed him. Um, and he confessed. And they regarded the, the, the fights quite seriously. And he was expelled the very next week. It was a pity, really. Because... He was a good lad who'd done a stupid thing. That's us, we're done.